talk more about how America uh, can best calibrate its economic and medical uh, responses to the coronavirus as Tom Friedman, Pulitzer Prize winning columnist for the New York Times. His latest column is a plan to get America back to work. And before I even uh, saw this in the paper, a lot of people had sent it uh, to me uh, already, Tom, many of them uh, people running businesses. And, and this was really before I think we saw the, the president say some similar things. And it's become it's become a lot more common to hear people uh, with some of the uh, similar points that you're making. Is that fair to say that you and the president sort of are, are on the same page on this or, or are there significant differences in how you want to do it? Well, I, I think there's a, a sequencing question, Joe. Um, uh, you know, I felt the reason I wrote that column is um, I was talking to a lot of business people, and I felt people wanted to uh, talk about uh, both the health and economic uh, 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 you know, things we need if, to, to recover from this. And um, uh, so I, I used that column to um, to basically uh, elevate this conversation. So l let me just talk about what the argument was and where I'm coming from, which is a little different from the president's. Um, uh, this was based on a conversation with a public health expert, Dr. David cats. Um, uh, he had written a piece in the Times, and then I, I tried to sort of take it to the next step. What, what, is, what was Dr. Katz arguing? He was basically saying that w what is killing us, you know, uh, slowly and quickly right now is uncertainty. Um, we, we've been told to shelter in place. We've been told to, to distance. Um, businesses have no idea, you know, what's coming next. And so um, there's nothing worse for a, an economy or for a family at home than uncertainty. And so the first First thing you know, uh, I was arguing for in that piece is that we have a plan, um, and not based on the president's gut feeling, not based on what he woke up today or next day. What is the plan? Okay, and the plan that Dr. Katz offered, Joe, is five points. First, break the chain of transmission with a hard stop, um, shelter in place, social distancing for a set period of time. He proposed two weeks because the, if you've got the coronavirus, it usually manifests within those two weeks. You'll know either you've got it or you don't. But it could be two and a half. It could be three. Whatever the health experts uh, decide. That's number one. And during those two weeks, you also really try to isolate most uh, or segregate most those most vulnerable, those you know, 65 and older. Second, follow that up with massive testing so we can get the data uh, and know what the denominator and the numerator is so we know how many people are affected and what and which categories are indeed affected most and for how many people this is actually fatal. Once you've done that for a couple weeks and you've got the testing data, then we can begin to um, uh, pivot uh, to slowly fold back into the economy or steadily fold back into the economy people now who have demonstrably don't have the disease um, and aren't like to communicate it with others and at the same time have mobile testing units out there so we're also keeping track because not everyone's going to quarantine perfectly for those 14 days. Then you have another week uh, or two weeks or three weeks of monitoring and verification. And, and over a month you can keep rolling people back in into uh, the economy, and we can get back to work again. But, Joe, it depends on, on having that hard stop, that real social distancing that breaks the chain of transmission uh, for two to three weeks, whatever. And my, my concern is in the country, some states are doing it, some aren't. The president yesterday in his, in his briefing praised the governor of Nebraska kind of for not doing it. And that's crazy because we're, we're, we're one whole integrated country, and, and Nebraska is not going to be unaffected by this or we aren't going to be unaffected by people in Nebraska who don't social distance. So I think I, I, I truly want to get the economy going again because it's also a health issue. If, you're, if your dreams, your hopes, your career, and your savings have been crushed, you're going to be sick from that. If you can't get into the hospital for your weekly uh, treatment for cancer or anything else, you're going to be crushed by that. So we, we, we want to balance the two. But the way you do it, the way you maximize that, Joe, is if you have a very clear five-point plan, whatever it is, is that's what I think business wants. That's what mom and dad want. Hey, Tom, a question for you. We just spoke with Scott Gottlieb, and he pointed out a couple of things. First of all, 
the idea that there are more 20, 30, and 40-year-olds winding up in the hospitals than we might have anticipated. They may not be dying from this, but they are getting pretty sick, and they are being put on ventilators. And there are going to be long-term ramifications from this disease, uh, uh, you know, breathing so, Becky, issues that last I, yeah, for some time to come. I, I, what, I, what do you say to that? I've heard that, and um, uh, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a medical expert at all, but I have asked the, the doctors I've been talking to about this. And that's why we so need testing and data, um, because uh, were those people all with pre-existing conditions? I don't know. I, I just have no idea. Um, you know, what, what percentage are they of the total number? Mm -hmm. That's precisely why you need to have a... Uh, a social distancing period, a sheltering in place while you're doing massive testing. So we make the pivot to people going back to work based on understanding the exact stratification um, you know, of the of people who have been hit by this disease and who we can fold in most quickly um, uh, and most easily. Uh, but that's why social distancing plus testing, that has to be stage one, which is then gives you the foundation to start folding people people back into the economy because you know precisely who is being most affected in which ways. Hey, Tom, uh, just in terms of the timeline that you're thinking about relative to the timeline that maybe the president or others are thinking about, given, given uh, what we heard from uh, Dr. Gottlieb, given uh, this idea that, that masks would not be available uh, or, or N95 masks not available en masse, uh, for the public, if you will, for at least a month uh, from here. And the testing clearly, I think it's hard to believe, is going to have ramped up to such an extent that you could have, you know, even 50, 60, 70 percent of the population back at work to, to do it the way you're talking about. And I think we all want to get back to work as quickly as possible. What does that timeline, though, look like to you? You talked about two weeks. There's these other sort of steps that probably have to take place. And then the other piece of it is 65 million homes are what are called multi-generational homes. So you have young people living with older people and how you're going to adjust that in real time. Well, you know, again, I have no opinion about it, Andrew, because I don't know about this. I, I can only tell you what the people, I, the experts I've been able to talk to, you know, are, are saying. Um, and we have to be guided by, you know, what is medically right and possible. And so that's why I say maybe it's two weeks, maybe it's three weeks. You know, one of the things we did, because people rushed to send everybody home from college, um, we actually may have, you know, advanced the spread of this because then young people went home. They were with mom, dad, grandma, grandpa. They might have Actually, we might have been better off um, having those young people actually stay in place in school, you know, where they were. And that's why, you know, um, uh, I am guided entirely by what the medical experts say. And if the medical experts say that, you know, it's going to take three weeks precisely to get all the medical testing equipment out there, then it's going to have to be three weeks. I think people will tolerate, Andrew, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, if they think you have a plan. If they think you have a plan and every day the president comes out and says, we have a plan, uh, we said we'd do this on day three, and here we are on day three, day five, day seven, I think people would be much more reassured than if they felt that we were kind of making decisions on the fly on gut feelings and not on the basis of the best science and the best technology. And that, to me, is what's been missing here. I talk to so many business people, and they say, look, I, I don't know uh, which companies, which parts of my company to hold up, which parts of my company to cut off, who to lay off, when. I don't have a sense that we have a plan. And I think if the president came out with a plan, start with two weeks, but say it's going to be guided by the medical experts. We may have to roll into three weeks of social isolation, but once we do that, we'll have the testing out there. We'll be able to start full holding healthy people back into the economy very quickly, that's what will make the stock market really go up. If people feel like, wow, we actually have a plan to get back to work, not just a gut desire by the president to get us back to work. Okay. Very good, Tom. Appreciate, uh, appreciate your insight today. And, and uh, that caused a big splash, that, uh, that piece you wrote the other day. Good to hear you uh, summarize everything for us here. Thank you. Thanks, Joe.